G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash Am I the Asshole? Let's go. Am I the asshole for taking my niece to court over a coat? I, 28 female, have a niece, 16 female. She is my only sister's only child. Two years ago, I married a very wealthy man, 34 male, and because of the pandemic, last Christmas was my first with my in-laws. My mother-in-law gifted me a coat that is worth more than $20,000. I saw her wearing it, asked where she bought it, and she said that it'll be my Christmas gift from her. I didn't know how much it was. I knew that it was expensive, but I thought that it was maybe $3,000 at most. I was visiting my sister last January when my niece saw it, she googled the brand and showed me how much it really was. I won't lie, I didn't wear it after that because I was afraid of ruining it. Last week, I wore it while visiting my sister. While I was putting it back on to leave, I felt something go splat on my back. Then my niece started cackling and the smell of paint hit me. I was so pissed off while she was not apologetic at all. Her mom screamed at her and said that she was grounded. Then she said she will pay for the dry cleaning. While I was in my car, still in shock by the way, I got an alert that my niece posted a reel. It was of her doing a prank on me. And she said, I'm going to hit my aunt's $20,000 coat with a paint-filled balloon to see how she reacts. I saved it on my phone, sent it to her mom, and told her that a week's grounding is not enough. She did not reply, but I saw that my niece took it down. It got less than 5 views by then. The next day I found out my coat cannot be saved. So I called my sister and told her that her daughter had to pay it back. Well, we got into an argument and she said that she will not be paying it. And if I wanted a new one, I should get my husband to buy it for me. I think that they should pay for it, as they can afford to. In my opinion, they should sell my niece's car and pay me back my money. We did not reach an agreement, so I told her that I will be suing and reminded her that I have video evidence that her daughter, A, did it on purpose for online clout, and B, knew exactly how expensive it was. People in my life are not objective at all. I have some calling me an asshole, some saying they are assholes for not buying me a new one, and some so obsessed with the price of the coat that they are calling me an asshole for simply owning it and wanting a new one. So, am I the asshole? Edit, sorry for not making it clearer, but my coat was bought new, just identical to my mother-in-law's. In the comments, not the asshole. she ruined a $20,000 coat, she wasn't even apologetic. For a prank video, for a 16-year-old, she's acting a lot like a 6-year-old. Heh, <laughs> welcome to 2022. It's nothing new, but teens just didn't publicly document all their idiocy back in our day, so there wasn't evidence like there is now. I disagree. Six-year-olds are rarely that mean and destructive. This girl knew the value of the coat was extreme and deliberately set out to destroy it, record it, put it on social media, and gain attention from it. That's a crime, and it's not going to be a misdemeanor with a 20k value. When you call the lawyer, ask him to help you go to the police station and press charges on the attention-seeking niece. Ask the lawyer to make sure to notify you when your niece will be arrested. Go film it and put that on social media. Maybe then she and her parents will learn that if you deliberately destroy someone's property, you replace it. I think it's a real-life consequence to press charges or pay for the coat. Since it's family, I think both are overkill. I would either let your sister know the niece can pay you back or you will press charges. Simple as that. I would personally frame it as a teaching moment rather than revenge. If they or she can't afford it, I'd say charge the new one and she needs to get a job and make payments with a contract in writing of how much she gives you every pay period. And have it include interest. Parents could do this as well. It's probably going to take the kid three and a half years to pay it back. That kind of long-term debt will be a wake-up call. Not the asshole. This is a really good way for your niece to learn that actions have consequences and hopefully will serve her well in the future when she's older. And your sister seems to need that lesson too, sounds like. Just have your husband buy you a new one is not an appropriate reaction to your kid destroying a $20,000 item. OP replies, exactly. He's my husband, and even I don't feel comfortable asking him to drop that kind of money on something frivolous, 
while she is comfortable doing that? I just gotta ask what kind of coat was it? I'm dying to know. A Chanel? Gucci? Limited Burberry? Barmain? OP replies, Lauro Piana, a brand I haven't ever heard of before I got my coat. And brace yourself, but apparently it's not even that expensive by rich people standards. My husband was talking about a blazer with gold, as in real gold, buttons. It was a gift he received from his grandpa from some tailor in New York City. Holy crap, I just saw a $34,000 coat, and you're saying that that brand isn't that expensive to them? Jeez, I just cried in poor. OP replies, Before I met my husband, I thought I was doing well for myself. Then I entered his world and found out the real difference between rich and wealthy. My sister-in-law was having a pregnancy craving while staying with us. I was less than six months into this whole relationship. My reaction was to grab my keys to get her what she wanted, as my husband was busy. She just looked at me weird and said, just call the concierge, this is what they're paid to do. It was a mind-blowing moment for me. Laura Piana is high-quality fabric luxury, not trendy designer luxury. Assuming it can be replaced, sometimes production is limited, you can wear that coat for the next 40 years and hand it down to your daughter if you have one. I do not have a budget for luxury clothing. If I did, a Laura Piana overcoat is on my wish list. This is something fewer and fewer people understand. There is paying for a label which is frivolous and dumb, then there's paying for equality and longevity which is far from either. This is in Sam Vimes's Boots Theory territory. And now on to the update. So here's a quick update since the situation has been resolved. When my husband got home, I told him what happened and I showed him the video. He asked if I spoke with my brother-in-law and I said no. All my conversations were with my sister. He said that he'll take care of it. Now, a disclaimer, I understand nothing when it comes to insurance claims. And this is what my husband told me, slash I understood happened. My husband talked with my brother-in-law and told him exactly what happened and showed him the prank video. Then he told him that the coat was insured, we will be filing a claim and submitting the video, and we might have to file charges for the claim. He assured him that we would be dropping the charges, we do not want to send niece to jail. Then he told him that one of two things might happen. After our insurance pays us, they will come after them. If their insurance pays, their premium will skyrocket. If it doesn't, they might sue them, and they might get a lien on their house. My brother-in-law asked if there was a way that he could pay us without involving insurance. My husband told him that that was what we wanted at first, but that my sister insisted that they will not be paying us back. Apparently, my brother-in-law was not in the know, and he was very pissed off at what my niece did and my sister's response. So they came to this solution. My niece's car will be sold, and if it doesn't fetch the whole compensation money, she will have to get a job and pay me the whole check until it is paid off. Also, she is grounded for the rest of the school year. I am thankful for the people who encouraged me to talk with my husband. In the comments, that's a fair outcome that avoids lifetime level consequences for the niece and still stings hard enough to make the point. Communication is always a good place to start, and I'm very glad your brother-in-law stepped up to handle the situation appropriately. Agreed. The niece did a stupid, screwed-up thing and needs to feel the consequences, but she doesn't deserve to go to jail over that. Being grounded, losing her car, and possibly having to work to pay it all off is a reasonable punishment. What an excellent resolution. Thanks for sharing it. Your brother-in-law is a very good man. I hope your sister realizes how lucky she is to have a man with integrity. Hopefully your niece is getting a timely life lesson that helps her future adult self understand more about life consequences. Exactly. Having her car sold, getting a job, and being grounded seem like appropriate punishment the sister should have concluded in the first place. Glad the brother-in-law is level-headed and was able to come to this agreement. Hopefully sister doesn't override brother-in-law. I don't think she can. Insurance litigators are real assholes, so overriding her husband basically means either paying more premium or going to court with a lawyer, and even bad lawyers are 250 an hour cheapest. This post reminds me of how poor I am. I think twice about what groceries I buy. A $20,000 coat would have me anxiety sweating constantly. I don't think I've ever spent $20,000 on clothes in total for my life so far. 
Our next post is titled, My friend is planning to cheat on his future partner to see if he feels guilt over cheating. My friend, 18 male, has recently announced to our friend group that he is planning on entering a relationship with a co-worker, 18 female, and plans to cheat as soon as possible. The only reason he wants to do this experiment is to see if he can feel guilt over cheating. He has been acting on this plan for months to form a deep connection with her beforehand to deepen the blow. Doing so, he discovered her current mental instability and her recent acts of self-harm. We expressed we didn't support him and asked him what will happen when she finds out. He doesn't care if he gets caught or any of the consequences that may happen to his mentally unstable co-worker if he does get caught. I asked him about the situation again to see if he changed his mind about it, and he said that he's going to commit to the plan. He even brought up a weird Overwatch comparison and said that Moira did unethical experiments on Reaper for the betterment. For reference, Reaper states that he now lives in constant pain because of her weird-ass experiments. Regardless, he does admit that what he is doing is wrong, but still wants to do it. In general, it's just this whole situation is uncomfortable and gives me a shitty feeling. It was only made worse when he started making jokes about her offing herself. I don't know what to do, and I'm unsure about how to go about the situation. In the comments, Dear God, please tell his co-worker what he's planning and cut him off. He is clearly a crap person. If you have texts from him about this, take screenshots and send them to her via Instagram or something. She does not deserve to be hurt for the sake of his twisted experiment, and you shouldn't be friends with someone so eager to do something so overtly cruel. Informing the co-worker with proof is priority number one. You need better friends. You are going to be judged by the world for keeping company with someone like him. Don't be a bystander to some sociopath's sadistic wet dream. Tell this poor girl. Also, you should remove yourself from your friend if you don't want to feel guilty for being associated in any of his future shenanigans. I, I just... quoting Overwatch? Seriously? It's his joker moment. <laughs> <laughs> what? So unhinged. Oh my god. Tell the co-worker if you feel that you are safe and she is safe. Do it in private and be respectful. If she still goes with it, then that's her problem now. Stop being friends with that guy. He sounds like a cold and heartless person. And now on to the update. My friend found the post before I took action and read all of your comments. He texted me in the morning asking me about it, and I confirmed that it was about him. He told me that the post, the comments, and our friend group discouraging him made him regret his plans and anything he has done with her to help further it. The only problem is that although he doesn't want to do the experiment, he still wants to be with her for a short time, specifically for sex. I told him there is no point hanging around with her anymore and to disconnect himself from her. He resisted to the idea, but eventually agreed to it and asked to stay in our friend group. We as a group refused and we decided to cut him off. We told his co-worker about the situation and advised her to tell HR and to move on from him. We also told her that if she needed evidence against him to contact us and welcomed her into our group if she wanted to join us. Thank you all for your advice and for all of your comments that changed my ex-friend's mind. If there is anything I should consider before moving on, please tell me. In the comments, what an effing psychopath. Seriously, dude wanted to see if he felt guilty from cheating, completely ignoring the fact that him coming up with his whole psychotic plan in the first place already should tell him everything he needs to know about himself. Yeah, it's like he's made it clear he doesn't give a crap about her. Why does he think he'd feel any guilt? He just wants to hurt her. I just want to know what kind of mental gymnastics were happening in his head to get him to continue doing this since I never had these thoughts as a teenager. This is the first time I've ever seen Overwatch used to justify cheating just to see. Nah man, you don't get it because you're not a pro gamer. I've been playing a lot of Hearts of Iron 4 recently and I'm planning on using my vacation days to invade Poland just to see. Dollars to donuts, this guy commits some heinous crime in the future just to see how it feels. I'm willing to bet that it's already happened. Nah, only skinned some animals in the woods so far, no red flags at all. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for allowing my 8-year-old daughter to shave her head? 
So this past week, my eight-year-old daughter has been begging me to shave her head. This just started after a 17-year-old cousin did it. I have always considered myself a supportive mum and let my kids do whatever they want, within reason of course. She had extremely long, blonde, gorgeous hair just like I do. She was fully aware that I was going to support her decision, school was cancelled for the rest of the year, and she won't go back to school until August, possibly September, so her hair will have time to grow out. So last night, I got out my husband's clippers and shaved her head for her. She smiled the whole time, and she loved the end result. The next day, I took a photo to send to my mum, and only my mum. My mum decided to forward it to a bunch of other family members who got back to me. 90% of them agreed that I'm the asshole for not saying no to her and setting limits for her, and also told me that I'm setting her up for bullying. Here's the thing, it's literally her hair and it will grow back. She knows, I asked her if she regretted it, and she is extremely happy that she did it. As for bullying, she knows how to stand up for herself, and that hair doesn't define her beauty. I personally don't think I'm the asshole, but I want to know everyone else's views on this. In the comments, not the asshole. although her hair probably won't grow as fast as you think it will. OP replies, of course I don't expect her hair to be long by the time she goes back to school, but at least long enough to style. Her hair grows pretty quickly. Not the asshole. As it grows out into a longer pixie cut, there will be a weird mullet phase that people don't seem to talk about. That was the part that I always hated when growing out my pixie cuts. Props to you for being supportive. I loved that phase. It went from all over number 3, to 90s wet otter lesbian hair, to cute pixie, to the main character from Hotel Transylvania, to Beatles Mop, to Johnny Ramone. Beatles Mop and Johnny Ramone were my faves. Very cute grunge. Not the asshole. I do think it's important to help your kids understand what they're doing and what the consequences of their actions can be, so they avoid acting impulsively. But I think you did just that. On the bright side, she's saving money that would have gone to the shampoo and conditioner bill. OP replies, Great point about the cost of shampoo and conditioner. She is really happy with her shaved head, and she might do it again, so that will keep costs down for a while, hopefully. Whoever said, you failed to set limits, scares me. If they think that they need to set a limit over something like this, I hope that they don't have their own children. People's obsession with hair and needing it to conform to some kind of socially accepted norm has always been baffling to me. It's literally just hair, and it's purely aesthetic. Who cares what other people's preferred style and taste is? I literally don't get why anyone would care, but an alarming number of people literally think that they deserve a say in other people's hairstyles and think it's okay to like really harshly and meanly judge other people for the crime of having an unconventional hairstyle. It's messed up. And now on to the update. So many of you guys said that I am not the asshole. The people who told me that I was the asshole said that because she would regret that decision. We shaved her head almost a month ago. Just a few nights ago, she asked me to shave it again for her since she really liked it and I was more than happy to do it. I do plan on buying her a wig or two off Amazon before she goes back to school in case she regrets it and wants to wear it to school but take it off at home. I just want to make it clear. My husband's side of the family, her dad, was fully supportive. After all, her cousin inspired her to do it. I'm also spending less on shampoo and conditioner as she had super long hair. As for my side of the family who was upset about it, some of them had a change of heart after she talked to them herself and told them that she was really happy with her decision. The other few think that she was forced to say she was happy, but I don't care. My mum, who was the one who forwarded the picture to my family, apologised. She told me that she did it because she thought that she looked adorable, but should have asked me first. But she was supportive of us. My daughter wants me to let everyone know that if you really want to shave your head, just do it. According to her, she really loves the way that it feels on her pillows. She has silk pillowcases, and she liked the feeling of the shower and the rain on her head. In the comments, My wife shaves her head occasionally after doing it the first time in support of a friend going through chemo. Just be extra careful about sunscreen and or hats now that summer is coming. Just because bald heads burn super easy. 
I also shave mine, so I know this from experience. I realized I was starting to get a bald spot on top of my head only when I got a nasty sunburn one summer. It hurt like hell, especially putting a t-shirt on and off. I don't get why we don't let kids have regrets. Maybe you shave it and she hates it. That's life. It's hair. It grows back. People get their knickers twisted for the weirdest things. This is exactly the right answer. What's wrong with the kid regretting it? The mum already got her a wig, and then she'll have learned a great lesson. And hey, maybe she'll love it and she'll discover more about herself. Literally all I see are upsides. I wish more parents adopted this attitude for small, non-consequential things like hair and clothes. When I was young, I wasn't allowed to grow my hair because, per my mum, I had long hair before. I regretted it, so I know that you would too. I wasn't allowed to colour my hair either. Well, guess what? Since I reached adulthood, my hair has never been short, and more often than not, it's in some colourful shades. I have not regretted it either yet. Let kids experiment within reason. It gives them a sense of bodily autonomy, and if they regret their decision, well, at least they'll learn from it. And that's where I'm going to leave today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.